I'm going to do a presentation today uh, just on some fundamentals on scrolls. Scrolls are something that show up in so much of what we do as blacksmiths. Um, and even if you're not into scrolling, I think they're a really great way to build your, um, your skills, both in controlling where the metal is going and in learning how to see the shapes. So they're kind of like doing scales if you're a musician. Um, there's some video on here that my buddy Chris Bernoulis did um, from Vista Forge. This is using some stuff from a presentation I did for California Blacksmiths Association. And uh, some of it includes some slightly rough video. Apologies, I hope you can put up with it uh, and that it's ultimately helpful. So scrolling basics. So first of all, let's talk about the shape. Um, what's a scroll? Well, a scroll is just a curve that's continuously expanding as you move out from the center. So it's tighter in the middle, looser as you move out, or it's a smaller radius in the center and a larger radius as you move out. A really good way to look at scrolls to see them well is to not look at the line of the metal itself, but instead look at the space that is being defined by that line. In other words, look at the leaves here, the background. What does that shape look like as we move from the center out? And here we've got one that's like a nice little rounded shape. And then it's sort of a, a a wedge that keeps getting bigger and bigger as we work our way out. And that's that's a nice little negative space. I use negative space a lot. I'll hold my scrolls up to the light um, or I'll hold them against some light colored background so I can see the negative space. One of the things I've observed is I think most scrolls that are sort of normal uh, tend to be between three quarters of a turn and one and a half turns. So this one here is about, that's a half a turn, that's three quarters, that's a turn. And that's a turn and a half. So it's about a turn and a half. That's pretty typical. If you do more than that, you're making a more specific artistic statement, which is fine. Just make sure that that's the statement that you mean to be making. Um, a few things that scrolls don't do. One, the negative space as you move from the center outward should never get skinnier. It should never have a pinch point or a bottleneck. The metal itself, that nice curve, shouldn't have kinks sharp bends or flat spots. That's something we don't want. And something that scrolls don't have that's a little weird when you think about it is that the center of the scroll isn't actually in the center of the space that the scroll fills. And I think it's important to recognize that because otherwise you can end up working really hard on trying to get the middle in the middle and then realize that your scroll is tremendously ugly. So don't try to put the middle in the middle. It's not there. A little bit more about shape. So there's two different spirals generally that are used as scrolls. Uh, one is the arithmetic spiral. And in an arithmetic spiral, the growth happens at precisely the same rate the price, precisely the same amount as you go around. So the, here's an arithmetic scroll that I drew. And I think I did about three and a half squares for the spacing between one layer and the next. So here, three and a half squares, and we go out a quarter of a turn, and it's three and a half squares. We go out another quarter of a turn, it's three and a half squares, out another quarter of a turn, three and a half squares. Um, these are great. They're a little unusual uh, in design. You see them in ancient Greek stuff. You see them in some Art Deco stuff, um, some medieval Gothic hinges will have an arithmetic scroll, but otherwise they're a little unusual. So again, if you choose to do them, you are making a specific artistic statement. Much more common is something like the lower image here, which is a geometric scroll. This is one where the rate at which it increases, increases. So here I've got two squares between adjoining layers. And then as I come around a quarter turn, oh, it's three squares. And I come around another quarter turn, it's out to five squares. And another quarter turn, it's out to eight squares. So it's expanding as it comes out. And it can expand a lot or a little. It can be hardly more expansion than an arithmetic scroll. It can, be, it can open very quickly. Um, this one that I drew is a really classic one, the golden ratio or Fibonacci scroll. And if you haven't drawn one, I really strongly suggest you look it up um, and learn how to do it with the little squares. It's kind of a fun project to do. Um, and it helps you to understand what's going on there. Couple of fundamentals on the forging. Just a quick reminder, when you, scrolls have some sort of an end on them, some sort of an end, as well as having the bend. And um, when you're doing the forging of the end, of course, forge it hot. Um, if you don't, you run the risk of getting the dreaded fish lips, and Mariano told us all about all the problems with fish lips. 
Um, when you're bending it, actually scrolling it, you don't have to have it yellow hot. You can have it red, that's fine. Um, but do keep in mind that an even heat, an even color will give you an even bend. If you don't have an even heat, you're not gonna get an even bend. And I make that mistake a few times in the video I'm gonna show you. Last quick thought on temperature is if you like how something looks, quench it to lock it in. You're working from the center outwards in a scroll. And if the middle looks good, quench it before you work further out. I have actually seen scrolls, centers of scrolls, unscroll themselves from inertia when the outer part was being worked on. And it's just so depressing. <laughs> not a nice thing to have happen. Most scrolls have some sort of a taper in them. Uh, and the one I'm going to demo, that's pretty much all it's got. So just a few reminders there. The shape you get in your metal is going to be defined by the space, the shape of the space between the hammer and the anvil. And if that space is parallel, then you're not going to get a taper. You're going to get little steps. But if you want to taper, you have to have a triangular shape, like the shape of the taper that you want, right? So that hammer has to be angled. Um, to have nice tapers, it's really good to start very short and steep, and then make the taper slowly less steep and longer. That allows you to control the length of your taper instead of having it control you. Um, so if you want to make a three centimeter taper or an eight centimeter taper, you'll have that control if you start steep and then go longer. Last thing we want to keep in mind in planning our forging is that if you're trying to forge down stock that's um, kind of tall and skinny, if the ratio of the height and width is greater than three to one, instead of forging down, it's likely to fold. And folding is not nice. Um, and it can turn into a cold shut. So we're going to have to plan ahead to avoid that. That's a good thing to do. So the actual scrolling, some of the things that are key to remember when you're trying to actually get that scroll happening. One is on your anvil, find a sharpish edge. And I say sharpish. You don't want it so sharp that it's marking the inside of the scroll. That's not good. But otherwise it should be quite sharp. If it's rounded, you can't scroll as tightly. So we're not gonna do it on the rounded corner. We're not gonna do it on the horn. Next, this is your mantra for scrolling. Hammer over air, always hammer over air. What does that mean? That means that wherever your hammer hits on the other side of the metal is air, not anvil. So you're working off the edge of the anvil over air. You're not working against the anvil or against the horn. Um, we're always gonna scroll from the very tip. You do the inner part first and then work your way out. And you have to get the very tip bent at the very beginning. If you don't, you will never ever, ever get it bent. So we want to get it right from the tip. We're going to scroll down first, then flip it up, and then we can pat it on its butt to roll it up tighter. If you get a kink, a bend like that, hit it on the kink, not on the flat spots next to it. There's always a flat next to a kink. Don't hit it on the flat. It'll make the kink worse. Hit it on the kink, and it'll even things out a little bit and smooth them into a nicer curve. And as I said, make sure you do have heat where you want it to bend. And if you like how something looks, quench it to lock it in. I like to check out my anvil and look for the edge that's making me happy. That was too rounded. That feels pretty good. And then I mark it and mark where I don't want to be so that I can find it again when it comes time to actually forge. Um, I use some, sometimes some grotty anvils in shared shops, but I do this a lot. If I'm doing tongs, I'm probably gonna find a nice rounded edge and I mark the landing spot so I don't have to think about it later and I can actually be where I wanna be. The actual motions of your body when you're, when you're scrolling. Um, let's go through those. So your right hand, or no, your hammer hand, it's holding the hammer at about a 45 degree angle and it just goes up and down right next to the anvil, right next to the anvil. Meanwhile, the other hand is pushing the metal out slowly from the very tip. So you combine those two actions and that is the action of scrolling. It's a great idea to test do this cold before you heat your metal up so that you can make sure you're in the right place on the anvil. I usually forge with my hammer side hip against the tail of the anvil. That's what works for me. But practicing so you know that you're in a good spot and it's all gonna work out well is a really great thing. So um, I'm gonna do a simple ribbon scroll, um, which is just a scroll.
scroll that has where the finial is simply a taper, a ribbon taper. And a ribbon taper means that the width stays the same the whole time. It doesn't flare out at the end. So uh, just a nice little taper there, a nice naturally rounded end. And it's a great one for seeing uh, how this works. When you forge taper, forge scrolls, you generally do the forging of the end part first, the finial, and then you do the scrolling. So the finial here is simply a taper. What am I going to do to get it? Well, I'm going to preform the taper, which means I'm going to bring down the width first so that when I put the taper in the thickness, it won't spread out too much. So I'm going to bring it in skinny first so that when I start to taper it, it just spreads out a little bit. And I'm going to start my taper steep first and then make it longer and then do overlapping blows. Uh, I'm going to stop tapering when I'm back out to the original width of the material. When I get back out to the original width, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to let a natural, nice natural bulge form at the front end. I'll do that. I'll look at it. And then if I don't like it, I'll repeat those steps until I have a taper that I like. That's the length that I want that looks the way I want it to. So again, I will preform in width. I'll bring the width in first before I do the taper in the thickness, steep first, then longer. Um, and then finally, once I've got that nice taper coming up, it's going to heat, it's going to end at the parent stock. And there's going to be a little corner there. And I don't want that corner because when you scroll it, that corner can look like a, a lump sticking out. So I'm going to just hit it a few times and just transition it from the nice straight taper into the original bar thickness. I'll show you all this, but I want you to know what you're looking for. So I'm starting in the thickness, in the width, starting steep, making a preform, making a taper the wrong way. And I'm working from both sides and trying to make sure it's well centered. Then I start very steep with my taper, very, very steep, slowly bringing the angle down and then getting some overlapping blows as I make it a little bit longer, but I'm watching the width. And when the width is out to the original width, I stop. And you know, a little bit of cleanup, clean up those hammer marks, even things out a little bit till I'm reasonably happy. And I'm running out of heat, so that looks pretty good. Um, it's about the original width. It's a little bit wider, but it's okay because I got another heat coming. Um, but I've got to taper up to about here. It's a little thick in the front. It's definitely worth doing another heat. So hot again. And again, same steps. I'm preforming by bringing in the width first, making sure that's well centered. Then I start steep in the front on my taper and then bring it down and work my way back with overlapping blows, watching the width until it comes out to about my original width, which is uh, about 12 millimeters here. And there, I'm just smoothing out, transitioning that, that little corner where the taper meets it. So there, I've got a reasonable similar width the whole way, and the taper looks pretty nice. So I've got a straight taper up to here and then somewhere in here it disappears. I'm not sure where, which is exactly what I want. I want to not be sure where it disappeared. So now we're ready to scroll. We're ready to actually do that. We're going to work again over a not quite sharp edge. I'm going to focus on working from the very, very tip. So I get that very tip bent at least a little bit. I'm going to have the hammer not coming flat down, but angled at about 45 degrees and it's always hitting over air. The other side of the metal is air. I'm gonna start by going down, then I'll flip it up and I'll tighten it in various ways. And if I wanna get more material involved, so if I've got a straight section, I wanna bring more of this material into the scroll. A trick I've figured out is to put a kink, a bend down here, which then sets up much better physics for being able to get this section bent and incorporated into the scroll. And again, you'll see that as we work on it. All right, so starting our first heat. So I'm gonna be 45 degree angle, scrolling down over the air, feeding it slowly on my appointed spot, holding it by the hammerhead down, feeding it slow at first and faster and faster. And it doesn't matter how much bend I've got, I can always tighten it. I just need to have some bend. So now, this is most of the rest of it, is me looking and figuring out where I want to change it and then changing it. So I'm thinking 
The negative space in here is too big. I wanna move this tip closer to here. How do you control what's being bent? I'm moving things around a lot. The key is this. You look at the scroll and this spot where it's touching the anvil to where I hit it with the hammer, that's the section that's gonna bend. So it will bend from where it's touching the anvil to where the hammer hits it. So I'm constantly changing as I need to where it's doing stuff. So here I decided I needed this section tightened. So I lifted it up to get this spot touching the anvil down here. And then I can tap it on the top and tighten this section and move the tip down towards this part here. And I'm always looking, looking to see where I wanna change it. Okay, there's my kink. What was that? So I put a little bend in here and what that did is it lifted this section up off the anvil. So now I can tighten this stretch here because I've got contact with the anvil there. I hit it up here and this section will tighten. I'll be doing that again. And I think I'm just about running out of heat, but that, that's not bad for our first heat. So that looks pretty clean. I've got a nice tight beginning and I've got no kinks, which is great. Um, I'm feeling like this is too big a space in here. So I'm definitely going to want to tighten that, which means this section here needs to be bent tighter. But you really want to make sure that you focused on that first half turn to three quarters of a turn at the beginning. It's almost impossible now for me to get a hammer in near the tip to change that, right? That's got to be good now because there's this bar in the way. So work your way out from the center, get the first three quarters of a turn really nice and then work further on. Okay, let's go on to the next heat. So I'm gonna start with a kink again so I can get more metal involved in the scroll. So there's my kink that lifts it up off the anvil and now this section can be bent really nicely. And once I've got the kink gone, that's me getting rid of the kink. Now, again, I'm back to seeing where I wanna change it, looking, adjusting so that I can tighten where I actually wanna tighten. Okay, I put in another kink so I could bring more material into it. And here's where I make a little mistake. And that's me pointing it out. I put a kink in here, which was easy because it was hanging over the edge of the anvil and I hit it right here. But notice how cold this is compared to this stuff. So then I was hammering up here and it bent at the bottom of the hot section where it went from hot to cold. Oops. And I put a kink in. So that's not ideal. That's got to be fixed. I'm trying to do it. I don't really have enough heat. Hit it on the kink, not enough heat. So let's move on to the next heat so I can get rid of my kink. There's that kink. So now I just set myself up so I can hit it on the kink. Ah, uh, much better. And then I'm back to looking and deciding what I want this to look like and adjusting and tightening where I feel like doing so. Oops, sorry, I'm not showing that to you. There you go. Looking at the negative space, deciding where it needs to change. A few more blows there. And still got a little heat. Oops, it's ugly. Yep, I went a little too far. So if I look at my negative space coming from the center outwards, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then it gets smaller. There's a pinch point in here where the negative space shrinks, <gasps> not good. And so then I go back and look at the line of the scroll to see what's going on there. And it's got this nice gentle curve in here. And then, oh, it's bent tighter right there. So I have a kink right there. And honestly, I can't get it from here. So I'm gonna take it off camera to the horn, flip it upside down, hang this on the horn, pull back on the main piece and smack it on the kink, because that's how you get rid of kinks, is by hitting it on the kink. So I, I can't get it there. So pulling back a little bit, hitting it on the kink, getting it so I can actually hit that spot. And oh, it's all better now, which is great. It's really good to learn how to figure out what's wrong and then figure out how to fix it. So now my negative space is looking pretty nice, no pinch points anymore. And my curves are just nice curves without any kinks in it. So that, that looks pretty decent.
I think it's a really good idea as a blacksmith to learn how to see what's wrong and not just say that it is wrong, which is good, but figure out why. So let's just take a quick look at some things for a ribbon scroll. Um, the taper on there should feel natural. It should feel like something that's in nature, like a tendril or something. It shouldn't be short and stubby. It shouldn't be lumpy. The width should be nice and constant. It's a ribbon scroll. It shouldn't expand just a teeny bit at the end because you weren't looking after it and it shouldn't vary. That would be weird. The curves of the scroll itself should be nice and smooth without kinks or flat spots. The bend of the scroll should grow from the very tip out. We don't want to have a flat tip. The tip shouldn't just be sitting there not moving. It should be the most bent. The negative space, as you move from the center outward, should expand or stay the same width. It should never close down a little bit. We want a nice natural radius tip from having forged nice and hot. We don't want something that's cut off and sharp cornered, and we don't want that fish lips from having forged too cold. And of course, it would be really nice if the scroll all ended up in one plane and didn't corkscrew up as it formed. Here's a couple of scrolls, and I hope you can agree with me that the one on the right is a little bit nicer, but let's look at some of the reasons why that's true. Uh, if we look at the taper, the taper on the left is, it's fairly, it's not very tapery. It's fairly stubby and it's about the same. And then uh, it suddenly gets deeper and it just suddenly ends. This one's more continuous and ends very gently. If we look at the start, the center, this has a nice curve to it and it's the tightest curve on the whole piece. Here, it's got almost no curve at all and it is not the tightest spot on the piece. That's not good. In fact, if we follow this through, it's kind of flat and then it bends a bit and the tightest spot is way out here and then it opens up. Okay, well, that's good, it's a scroll. And then it's a little flat and then it gets tighter again. That's a kink and then a little flat. So this is, this is not great. Where this one, we've got it tightest in the middle continuous curve coming out and no really distinct sudden changes. So we don't have any kinks in there, which is really good. Um, and if we look at the negative space on the right, we've got a nice rounded shape and then it gets wider, 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 wider as we move out. On the left, we've got this weird, ugly blob. I think it might be an alien head. And then the alien has a skinny little neck. So that's a pinch point. Um, and those are some of the reasons why this one doesn't look as good. So questions I'd be happy to do. I can also, we can talk about some of the other scrolls besides ribbon scrolls and what the names are and what they're good for or not so good for. We can talk about ways to improve your scrolling, whatever works for folks. Beth, thank you for this great presentation. It was amazing. So now would be a good time if you have any questions to post them to the chat. There is coming the first question, which is Hardway Scrolls. And Hardway Scrolls, yeah, that's these guys. So the Blown Over Leaf Scroll and the uh, Bevel Scroll, which are scrolls that bend in two different directions, right? They're, they're bending around, but they're also doing, a. they're starting out flat or almost flat, and then they twist to being on edge. So they're doing a, ni a 90 degree twist at the same time that they're doing the scrolling. Um, they're hard. <laughs> you really wanna think about them as two separate steps. One is forging the initial shape the hard way. You're forging a, a scroll in the flat, not in the, the thin part. So you're scrolling it the hard way. Um, and you're getting that end just right. And you're putting in the bevels, if it has bevels and whatever. And then you take a break and you rejigger your mind before you come back to do the scrolling the easy way, which is very hard. Um, that's really almost a whole other presentation. Uh, I think the big things on hard ways that I'll mention, again, make sure you get your first one, the easy, the bent, the hard way, the first part of the scroll done right and record it. I think it's a great idea to trace it. So you have your, what your original shape was in case your final result isn't what you wanted. You have something to look back to so that you're not just guessing all the time. Cause there can be a lot of guessing in those awful scrolls. The other thing is, is when it comes time to do the bending the easy way, right? Bending it this way, make sure those bends are always absolutely perpendicular 
to the axis of the metal. And that metal is going to be curved, right? So those that what perpendicular is, is going to change. If you're off on your bends, a little this way, a little this way, it's going to do awful, terrible, horrible things, and it's not going to work. You have to have those bends be 90 degrees. Um, one of the best suggestions I saw, it's definitely a Mark Asprey suggestion, is do your your blank. So do the, the leaf with a 90 degree bend or do the, the bevel scroll coming around a bit, trace it, cut it out of maybe some cereal box cardboard. This is a nice weight and fold it. Start at the very tip and put a little bend in 90 degrees across and do a series of little folds, maybe five, six millimeters apart little folds all the way along. And if you do it at 90 degrees, the whole thing should work. And if it didn't work, you did your folds wrong. If you trace three of them and do one with the folds the wrong way, one way, and one with the folds the wrong way, the other way, and one with the folds the right way, it's incredibly illuminating and can help you figure out what you did wrong on your piece. So yeah, those are, those are, are tough. And I have to say, I, you know, there's lots of stuff out there, but um, of the sources I've seen, the Kosira books, the, the old books from UK um, are great for doing the beginning of them and terrible for actually doing the scrolling itself. They're just like, and then scroll it. <laughs> um, and I think that Mark Asprey um, is really, has this analyzed better than anyone else. Um, so I, I recommend Asprey stuff for those hard way scrolls. Now, how much bevel on your bevel scroll? Some people are like, oh, you gotta be swoopy bevels, deep mountains, knife edge. And other people are like, I dinged the outside edges and I'm good. That's where I'm not gonna tell you what's right and wrong. You need to make decisions and it just needs to be a decision that you can back up. Um, I, I don't think that there's a right or wrong on that. On the leaf, I will say when you do the blown over leaf, it's gotta be a right angle bend 90 degrees right at the base of the leaf. It can't be a long, gentle bend there when you're doing it the hard way or it won't work. It's gotta be a sharp 90 degree at the base of the leaf in order to get a good blown over leaf scroll. Well, this is perfect, perfect transition to the next question from Mariano, which is <laughs> when you have a big leaf scroll, how do you think is the best way to get a beautiful oh shape and not God. get a sharp bend? Not Something get a like how to place the leaf in the middle of the scroll. In the middle of the scroll, right? Well, the leaf is not in the middle of the scroll, but it's closer to the middle on a blown over leaf scroll than anything else is to the middle of a scroll, right? Because mm. it cuts across the middle. First thing, make your leaf short. It's got to be really short and it's got to be so much shorter than you think because when you start working on that leaf, it's going to grow. And it always, as we know, anybody who's made any kind of leaf, right? You're like, oh, that's going to be great. And then you start, you know, spreading your leaf out. And all of a sudden it's like, wait, wait, it's a eucalyptus leaf. It's really long, right? You want a really short leaf. Um, you can always make your leaf longer. It's hard to push it back in. Getting that bend 90 degrees when you're bending it the hard way at the beginning, the first bend, 90 degrees right at the base of the leaf. There's the leaf, there's the stem, the beginning of the stem. Most of the stem bevel is here. Most of the stem taper is here, right? So it's right at the base. I think that's important. And then the other thing is to not get too, um, it's easy for the tip to come across and, and get too close to the next one. Back off. Um, I'll be honest, I think this is ugly. This is the official Abana level three grill. This is also the UK level three grill. Um, the way that scroll was drawn is hideous. It's, it's too closed down. The negative space is really, really not nice. Um, I've done some stuff on this and I, I'm happy to do one on the blown over leaf scroll sometime. But um, <laughs> when I did it and was talking to some kids and we were talking about negative space, attractive blown over leaf scrolls have the negative space of a leaf eating dinosaur or Dino from Flintstones, if that means anything to you. So there's this dinosaur head and neck. And if you get the dinosaur head and neck, it's just right that the, the first bend around is actually following the shape of the leaf. 
It's following that curve. It's staying the same distance. And then it starts to open up as it goes past the tip of the leaf. I think that's makes it look, that's really hard to explain. And I don't have chalk here. I'm sorry, you guys. Maybe this is almost asking for another, another trip held by you right? next year. Let's you see know, how that thing goes. Well, and I can, I, I do have some pictures here of a blown over leaf scroll. If we want to look at that negative space so we can see what that looks like. Uh, but let's see if there's any other questions first before I jump to that. So it looks like Wilfried has a question. It was a great presentation, but I've got a question for you. Um, I made some, some scrolls and they started wide, you know, mm -hmm. you, you widen them first. Yeah. So the thing is, you need to get the, how do, we, how do I say? Yeah, it needs to be nice in the middle of everything. The white stuff needs to be in the middle of everything. And that's where um, I had to make three and then I got it. It was, uh, it was quite, it was, was harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, making a nice fish tail that looks good. It takes a few steps. So here's, here's there's a, there's a fish tail. Mm -hmm. um, the, making the fish tails to start with, the biggest thing is that you're using your peen on your hammer, right? Yeah. You're still making a taper. This is, I think that's, this is the first important thing. You're still making a taper, right? So when you're using the peen, it's still hitting at an angle so that you make a taper and you still start steeper and then slowly make it longer and work and get further back. Um, the biggest thing is that your peen needs to stay parallel to the length of the metal, metal the whole time. You don't want to chase chase the bend, chase this to the sides and bend it around. It, you don't get the nice points that way. So I always start in the middle and then I move away from myself because that's my weak side with overlapping blows, right? And then I'll come back to the middle and I'll move towards myself with overlapping blows as it's getting colder. So there's one, I don't know if you can see this. Wah, wah, wah. Mm -hmm. There's one that I've started. So it's got, it's, there's the dent in the middle and I've gone out to one side, but I haven't gone to the other side yet. So it's only got half of it. The other thing is that, so there's a beginning one and it's got a really sharp, that's a nice thing here, but then the transition right here is not so good, right? It suddenly goes back to the original material. So I get the front spread out fairly steep and then I heat it again and I come back less steep and I spread out the next bit down. I spread right. out the next bit down in order to get a little bit more width in there so that instead of going like this, I'm going like this. Um, so that's for getting the shape. For the scrolling itself, the, the, yeah, the big thing is it's got all this width, right? So you have to not just go bam, 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 bam. You have to be paying attention to the width and you have to hit it in the middle and on the sides and the other side evenly so that it actually bends evenly. It's really easy for these to end up coming off to, and it's so hard to fix. I mean, you can usually fix it by, if you protect this by putting it in your hardy hole, mm -hmm. you can straighten things out, but um, yeah. And with, as with all scrolls, you wanna spend your time in that first half a turn, getting it really nice and tight the way you want it before you move on. Yeah, fishtails are interesting. They're even more interesting if you start putting on the welded bolt end. So you weld a round piece on the end or the, um, the solids, the snub end fishtail where you roll up the middle. That one, you don't wanna start with a fishtail. You wanna start with a whale tail where the ends come up straight for a distance so that when you roll up the middle into a tight sausage roll, uh, yeah, um, when you do that, it ends up being the same distance out until it gets to the part where it comes in a little bit. Yeah. Super, because that was the problem. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm glad we solved something. I have another one, okay. uh, which maybe- And then we'll go, then maybe I'll do the screen share again and, I'll, and we'll go back and look at the, those two hard scrolls, the, the weird scrolls. You know, if, if there hasn't arisen any other question but by then, I think this is a great idea. So you said hitting, if you have kinks, you hit it where the kink is. And uh, my question is, how would you, uh, where would you place the kink when you hit it? Is the kink also over air? Is it over the horn? Is it oh. over the face? 
That the kink is over air. You always hit over air because if you don't hit over air, first you're going to change the material, the shape of the material your, your scroll is. Mm -hmm. Second, you're not going to get a nice eat a nice smooth curve. The whole point to air is there's nothing making it change shape suddenly. All the changes are gradual. And so when you take that kink out, it's got to have air on the other side. You're not going to. So when I was doing it on the horn and I had a kink, the, the horn was, was in, I don't know if this even makes sense. The horn was it up in the corner here and I was hitting a kink back here. So the kink was still over the air, right? I was hitting something out here with the horn in there. Yeah. So, so gonna, if the kink would be here, yes, yes, you, I can get here, some pressure you would hit it there. there. Yep, think exactly. Yep, just enough. Yep, that makes sense. From Niels, my experience is to make it big and tighten it in, but the end has to be right the first time. I 100% agree. You, it, you, you need to get the inner part right. It has to be bent, and you have to get that first half turn to three quarters of a turn perfect very early on, because I can't get a hammer here anymore. This is in the way. Um, but then you can, you can have it be big and tight and tight and tight and tight. Sure, absolutely. As long as you can get your hammer at the parts where you need to be able to tighten it. I like the being able to, I get the beginning part and then I do that, do that, eh, kink it down here so I can bring in the next section of material. I think that works nicely when you're doing a hand turn scroll. What do I think about scroll tongs? Ah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so scroll tongs are, so there's a number of scrolling tools. There's scrolling forks, which is a pair of rounded surfaces that are parallel to each other that you can put in the vise or in the hardy hole. There's scrolling wrenches, which is the same thing with a handle on it that you can use from above. And there's scrolling tongs, which, they're not parallel to each other. Um, I think those are all really good tools for undoing your scrolls. Those are great for going, oop, I need to open it up. Um, I think that eventually they are good tools for scrolling, but I think you need to make sure that you've built up to that by doing plenty of hand scrolling with just the anvil and the hammer and your eye and your brain so that you're seeing the shapes before you start and that you're able to do that. And really it makes you a much better blacksmith before you start using those tools to do the bending because it's very easy to put kinks in. It's very easy to quickly make very ugly scrolls quickly and efficiently. Um, I think those are great tools for undoing. And I think that uh, you know eventually you get to the point where you can see the scrolls and where the bends need to happen. And sure, you can whip them out with that, right? I'm sure Rafa does that. Um, but, uh, when you're working to learn to see the shapes, just use the hammer over air and, and get that bending down. It's so easy to, with, a, with a, a fork to be too aggressive in one spot um, and to work too much of it and not have the middle perfect before you get to the outer part. And you're never gonna get the middle nice if you try and do it later. It's not gonna happen. Yep, yeah, you, yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. So Beautiful. I think they're great tools. And the same goes for a scrolling jig or a scrolling form, something that you pull the metal around. Those are fantastic, right? If you're trying to whip out, you know, a chandelier with matching scrolls, absolutely use a jig, but make the jig for that chandelier, right? So that it's doing the scroll you want for that design. Well, the only way you can make that jig is if you know how to scroll well enough to be able to see a nice scroll, right? I will say this on design. One way to design is by sitting there with a piece of paper and trying to draw pretty scrolls. Another way is to forge a scroll that you like and that you've measured how much material is in there and then trace that and then use that to make your design, right? And this is particularly true if you're using the, the hideous, awkward scrolls. Do not try to draw one of these and then try and forge it to the drawing. Forge one that looks good Make, take enough notes to be able to repeat what you did, trace it, do the design around that, right? Then you know you have a nice scroll. It's, uh, Niels mm. writes, it's crap if it doesn't work the first time, right? Better to start over than try to fix the mess. I, you know, I think there's a certain amount of fixing that you can do. You saw me do it. I, I took some kinks out. I opened some things up. 
Um, but if it's, if it's a complete mess, then yeah, flatten it back out, right? Go back to the, okay, it's ready to go and go back, scroll again. Um, and I've done that many times. Uh, I know one guy who's, he's very artsy and he's got this whole flow thing. And if it doesn't flow the first time, he has to straighten it out again because he has to always go from the beginning. I don't, I, I'm into being able to fix things a bit. But um, there's a certain point where it's like, yeah, just stop, just stop. Get out the scrolling fork, undo it, flatten it out, make it nice, start again. Yeah, definitely. But since there was not further, no further questions at the moment, I think it would be good now that there is still some time to go to this more complicated scroll. Look a at bit. a couple of these weird scrolls, different kinds of scrolls, solid snub ends, big fan of those. I love the, the hay penny, the ones that look like they have a coin on the end. But we're talking about these guys. This is a beveled scroll and here's a blown over leaf scroll. So Keith, one thing I will note with the two hard scrolls, they both have a limit, which is they have a front side that you're seeing here and they have a back side. So they are best in situations where people are going to be looking at the work from one side. Um, they might not be good for a stair railing where people will see it from the stairs and from outside the stairs. They might be good for a fireplace screen where you don't care what the fire sees, <laughs> only what you see from the outside, right? So that's definitely something to think about with them. That sidedness is important. They are very dramatic in the line weight change. You've got the edge on scroll going on. And then it, because of this twist that it does, it gets wider as it comes to the center, even though it's getting a taper on it. So they're very dramatic. Um, but let's go to the blown over leaf. So blown over leaf. Um, this is a pretty good one. It's not quite down all the way. So the leaf needs to be short. It should have life. That means every time there's a bend one direction, there should be a smaller bend the opposite direction. So the main bend is this way and the tip bends the other way. The main piece is arced, arced over the floor. So the tip swings out just a teeny bit. And you've got to do that at the beginning, just after you forge the leaf and put in the first bend. There's a taper back here out to the full thickness. So you can see how narrow it is here. That's uh, this bar is, I think it's 20 millimeter wide. So I've brought it down to about half of that for the stem, maybe a little less. Um, and you need to make a very tight bend there when you start it. But I think that this, when we're talking about what makes it good looking, I would say this one's almost good looking. Fairly tight here, maybe a little bit more negative space in there. And then if this arc, matches this arc on the top of the leaf or the bottom of the leaf through this section, that looks pretty good. And then just as you come to the tip, it should start opening up more. I think that makes a really good looking uh, leaf in the middle of the scroll is that, is that this arc matches more or less this arc and then it opens up a little bit. And you should have the, the dinosaur's head over here and it's it's very muscular, thick neck <laughs> coming across here. If you end up with a pinch point here, if this gets skinny, it doesn't look as good. This thing has a skinny spot. It has, it has this very high and round sticking way out. And then it has a pinch point right next to the leaf. And I think that's part of the reason why this is an ugly grill. It's an excellent proof of your capabilities, but it's ugly. Um, I, think, I think that mimic echoing those two curves is a really good approach and opening it up from there. And I think it's fun to play around with other stuff. Try doing scrolls that are normally done in flat stock in round. Try doing scrolls where instead of being based on a generally circular shape, you're doing a little bit more squished. Um, mess around. Here's a, this is a beveled scroll that's arithmetic. So the negative space is the same the whole time. That's crazy, isn't it? Um, Messing around with the, the leaves or with the, the, your fish tail making, I don't know what fish that is, but it's definitely got a tail. That can be really fun and a good way to, to build yourself up. I can, I can add something uh, in Spain. They try to make the, the bee shape as big as they can. This was like a sort of competition uh, between blacksmiths. So they try to, Make bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> well, 
Well, and the downs, there's two things there. One, to get enough material, sometimes you have to upset the end first yeah. so you have more material to spread. The other is, of course, you know, I love these fishtails, but that's nasty if your body's going to be anywhere near it. This is a great way to catch people's clothes and tear it, right? So this has to be high up or someplace where people aren't going to run into it. Um, Mariano just did, put out a nice little video of some of the ironwork at the Roskilde Cathedral in Denmark, which is uh, this fantastic 17th century stuff. Christian Fierdel, Christian IV hired the best blacksmith ever. And he did all this great interweaving stuff. But there was some split, some nice split uh, um, fishtails. So they had a cut in them, which lets you get a little V negative space and then get these guys further out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have like a six or eight millimeter round bar well together in the, yes. That's welded on. Yep. And that uh, welded bolt and scroll, that's the name of that one. Getting that weld on there, you want to, that's another place where you want to do a little upset first and leave a little extra material in the middle so that when you do the weld onto the round bar, there's actually something, because, you know, trying to weld something that thin, it, it just isn't going to hold the heat, right? Um, the other thing is to set them up stably. Uh, a friend of mine came up with a great solution. He took the round bar and he, he nicked it. He cut partway through, right? So you knew where the end was and he centered it on there. And then he put a, a bend in it out past the nick and brought it back and you can zip tie it. <laughs> Don't use some of those, you know, little pipe zips to hold it on here so that it stays in position so you can heat the whole thing at once. And you heat it with the round bar down, of course, not this one up before the weld and tap it across that top first. And you might want to put it into a, a swage so that the, the bar doesn't flatten when you do it. Those are great weld, a great, great scroll to try and do. And what a pain in the neck. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you start scrolling them, you want, to, you want to hold onto the welded part in a vise so that you're not putting any pressure on it. Okay. Trying to soften the corners. Yes, yes, the snagging issue. That's a great idea to soften the corners. And that's, you know, that's a look thing. How much do you want it to be this vicious pointy thing versus having a nice little rounded thing? I do like it being, so I think that one's a little more rounded. I like the front to be pretty flat. I think if the front isn't flat, it's a little funny looking. Um, if you try and scroll it and there's an arc there, it doesn't read very well. So you want it pretty flat in the front, but this has got just a little bit of rounding there. So I'm with you, Henrietta. Absolutely. Let's see, we could either say, keep, keep recruiting and spreading the word and bringing more blacksmiths into blacksmiths without borders. Go practice your scrolls, man. <laughs> I love the spreading the blacksmithing community, getting more. This, yeah. is, this is so much fun. This has been so great.